meeting of the City Council of the City of Regenster Order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we do have two amendments to the agenda. Item E is the VC, VLCT annual meeting delegate. Uh, that meeting takes place on October 2nd. And item F is a update from the Recreation Committee from the Deputy Mayor. Were there any other amendments? Great, we will proceed. We have uh, visitors with us tonight from the school board. And I'll take something to step aside, take off my council hat, put on my school board hat. Thank you very much. So I'm our candidate school board. I also have Stu and Brad, also school board members. Uh, we just wanted to give council and those watching a quick update on the retreat that the school board had back on the 22nd this month, trying to figure out what are our next steps for the school district. Uh, the recommendation I believe we're going to come forward at our meeting on the 9th will be that we will ask Addison, town of Addison, to vote in early November to close Addison Central. We'll ask the town of Ferrisburg to vote in early November to close Ferrisburg Central. We will combine in the newly branded, what is BUES, to become a community elementary school to be determined. That would be K through four. Um, we will create an independent middle school within the building of the high school, but somehow barrier it off. That would be five through eight, and then nine through 12 in the high school. Um, we're doing this for financial reasons. It's, that's where we are right now. There's fixed costs that need to be contained. Um, if we keep where we are right now and try and keep level funding, the current budget that we're going into will have to be cut by at least a million dollars. And the only way to do that would be to cut pro programming. Um, so we'd be looking at losing things like driver's ed or sports or Walden or AP classes we start gutting the education. And in reality, in three or four years, we'd probably be looking at closing schools anyways because it's just going to keep going. So we are trying to consolidate in an effort to keep educational aspect for our students as solid and as diverse as possible while keeping the tax rate both manageable for our citizens and under the required per pupil spending uh, that the state sets. If we go above that for people spending, we are then penalized in our taxes as well. So we can't just keep throwing money at it and say, well, I won the lotto, here's $10 million, do what you want. We'd still get ding then in our tax rate. So that's where we are. The FAQ is going at this one on French Porch Forum. It's been in emails. Um, faculty and staff at the school know about it. The, the community groups know about it. Anybody who's read French Porch Forum knows about it. Um, we will be having a lot of public comment, I'm sure, on the 9th. And we're open to questions. Um, there will be an FAQ on the web page. It's, it's actually live. OK, it's up now. Um, our most requested questions that have come out in the last few days, we try to answer in one place as opposed to just one-offs. Um, and we will go from there. Mark, one question. Um, Only one. <laughs> Only one at the moment. Is there any consideration to moving the superintendent's office out of a high rent office space and into some of these existing buildings that will now be empty? It would be really hard to have a central office 15 minutes away from either side. Um, there is consideration on possibly having a structure. I'm not sure or, yeah. Trying to figure out maybe an addition to something existing, we would like to try and get out of where we're renting and contain that cost. We have talked about whether it would work to put them in Ferrisburg or Addison, but the idea of having one campus is what's nice about financial stability, but then to have the people who need to be running it 15 minutes away 
and any parent who has to go there and any meeting that has to happen logistically would be problematic. So we're trying to figure it out, and a lot of that depends on what happens in November. If we get the votes, then we'll we'll figure that out. But that is we haven't forgotten about that. If if the, if the municipality votes to to close the building, then the building would you know potentially go back to the towns. Um, for us to maintain the building, we have to maintain it as an educational facility. So we couldn't actually use it solely for central office purposes for our articles of unification. Um, and yes, while it is you know fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars annual rent, that's a quarter of one percent of our total budget. So a lot of money. It is. It is. Do your FAQs talk about um, staffing changes? Yes. Okay. Before as I ask any questions, I'll read it before I ask any questions. Yeah, no, I mean, as much as we know right now, and again, it's a lot of what ifs. There's, you know, yeah. if one school closes, what happens? If both schools don't close, what happens? If, so, I mean, we're, we're trying to figure out what would happen in the future, but we won't, don't want to get six steps ahead of what ifs in case the first one doesn't work, in which case we've just spent a lot of time and money trying to figure out a scenario that's never going to happen. And at this point, we're still waiting for the full Board to officially endorse the plan. Right. So nothing really is forward until the ninth. We're just trying to be as transparent and open as possible so that people aren't completely freaked out, which I know they are anyways, but at least we're getting an early start on calming and saying we're trying our best. I have two questions. Okay. <laughs> Um, who gets to vote? Does the unified district get to vote, or just each town? Just the towns, the municipalities. Okay, that's, that's part of the unified agreement. If, if we waited until Jan, July 1st, 2021, the board could do it on its own. But we don't <coughs> think we have two more years to wait in a holding pattern. Right, right, right. Okay. Any other questions? Any Thank other you. comments from you? No. Well, good luck. Yes, good luck, and thank you for bringing it to us. I'm sure Andy will read a lot about it. <laughs> I figured you got that. Yep. So, pour it off, council on. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Moving onward, uh, did anyone have any questions on the warrant that was circulated? Do we have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? And a second? Motion made and seconded. Did anyone have any corrections or comments? I have just one, and that is uh, to correct Mr. Winterpainter's name. And his first name is Rain Walker, not Rain Water. Anything else? All those in favor of the minutes as corrected, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, I see some other folks in the audience. audience. Did anyone have any comments to make on an item that is not currently on the agenda? Great. We, we will move right along into business. The first item of business being uh, the Virgin's Police Department long-term budget strategy. This is a conversation that we began a couple of weeks ago. And um, <clears throat> I think that it's fair to say there has been a lot of discussion among council members, certainly in the community, about how to proceed with the budgeting process as it relates to the police department as well as other departments. Uh, there are some issues that we need to face pretty quickly, which includes how we deal with health care, uh, something that will become even ever more expensive. And so this is really a discussion to sort of give ourselves a direction as we move forward so that we are not scrambling around at the end of next fiscal year trying to come up with a budget. So I would love to hear your comments. Well, let me... Uh, First of all, I apologize for leaving uh, in the middle of this the other day, uh, but things happen. Um, and I actually think this is a great idea to 
but I think that we have to do all of them. Not, and I think it would not be a good idea to start with the police. Um, for many reasons, I think pretty obvious reasons. So what I'd like to propose is that at least one meeting out of every month, we take one part of the budget, maybe in order of the audit, and go through that individually, each section, um, and carefully go through each, like say, public works. We go through public works just as we would administration or fire department and make a list as mayor I would think you'd say let's just start with A, B, C and do it all that way but every month we have at least one meeting where we address the budget. I think that's a very good idea. I like the idea of doing the entire budget. I've gone through line by line and I don't think we know enough about the inner workings of the departments in order to make those in, those informed decisions. I think that what we should do is go back to Jim, to the chief, to Rick, to whomever, and try and have them list some recommendations for savings and maybe prioritize them with some reasoning behind them. And then if we want to call them in to ask them questions about it, I think that that would be a better use of our time than just trying to save 500 here and 1,000 there. Right. Maybe even have them come to the meeting if that was possible. Right. I think that it is important that we not necessarily look at this as an exercise in savings. Right. Uh, there, Efficiency. Efficiencies is a, probably a better way of putting it. Um, you know, I think that there are departments that are as bare bones as they can possibly be. So um, I'm not sure that it's necessary to devote an entire meeting, uh, but certainly I think it's a great idea that we, we work department by department. So I'll make that motion. Okay. To move forward. But I'll second that. There is a motion made and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? I guess I would want to, you know, to your point, I think if it's, you know, let's talk about what the goal of, you know, discussing each department would be. And it's, from my understanding, I mean, from the kind of tee up we did uh, last meeting of, of what you're kind of hoping to achieve here, it's more that we are looking to strategically think about this department, our overall budget, what percentage should we be targeting of this department of the overall budget? Is that, am I correct in understanding that, that we would go through each department and say, public works is X percent of our city budget, we need to stick to that and we'll make Effic we'll find efficiencies therein to make sure that happens. Police will be this percentage of the budget. In is that the goal here? That would certainly be my goal. Is that, does everyone else feel that that is the appropriate goal? How, what is your... I don't think we should go in thinking it's got to be percentage. We need to decide what our goal is mm -hmm. and then say, you know, do we need five more miles of sidewalk? Mm -hmm. Well, if we need five more miles of sidewalk, does it mean that the next year we're going to need five more? So sure. if we do it year by year and say, um, you know, the budget for public works might go up sure. in a year <laughs> that we're doing five miles. The next year it might go down, you know, right. percentage or two or three. I don't think you can randomly say percentages. I think you have to decide what you're going to do. For instance, let's use recreation because we added recreation this year. And there's going to be other things that we add add to the budget, not necessarily take away. I mean, it's not right. going to be just taking away. It's going to say, let's use administration for a decision because Joan's leaving. So we're going to have to say, well, how many people do we need? You know, what is our goal? What is what is our presence to the public? What is what is what are we trying to to um, when people come in? What what do we want them to see? I mean. You've done the building over for that purpose. I don't think you can randomly say that the the police budget's thirty whatever it is, and administration's thirty percent, and public works is twenty five percent. I don't think you can say that and expect to re. I think you have to find the goals, then go over the budget and say that's our budget for next year. Sure, and I don't think. I mean, 
I don't think anyone's suggesting we randomly assign percentages well, that's of departments. Why I you were asked, so. No, I mean, I think the department should completely be based upon what we're trying to achieve right. as a whole. And then we look deeper, and I, I don't think the word random ever right. okay. came I up. That just seems a little willy nilly. And you, we don't, need you don't want any, any large changes. Everything is going to be within, it's going to be incremental anyway. You know, we're not going to change department budgets by five or ten percent. Right. It's just not going to happen. Right. So it's not possible. It's, it's really a, just right. a matter of prioritizing, right. and and how do we get the most money for our tax dollars? And how do we spend the money? Well, and tracking towards right. targets, right? Ideally, right. yeah. But and I think I we think need to determine under, those targets first. Yeah. Sure. And understanding yeah. how a budget gets put together, you know, making sure we understand what Matt's trying to express to us. And I think that was part of the problem this year. We didn't quite understand what was going on. And that's our fault as anybody's. And I think that that part of it is something we have to do. So I think as part of it, we set the goal, we look at the budget, what are our priorities, and then make that budget, and then move on to the next. I, I think that um, I, I agree with, with Lynn. Um, I think that we can back up a little bit as well. I, I, I would like to see the budget start with the revenue side of it um, because the only thing that we accomplished this year is we gave everybody a tax increase and we now have a police union. So um, we uh, were judged by um, results. I, I've received in a number of comments and questions from residents that I really can't answer um, as far as specific line items, um, you know, drilled right down to very, very specific things. So I think that going through that process um, is useful for us and it's a lot more transparent and I think that the public will appreciate it but I really think that we need to start with the revenue side of it and I understand that there are costs um, just like with the school budget that health care they're they're out of our control but they're still our problem um, and, and we can't have another tax increase next year like we had it, it is not sustainable and so I think that where we start out you know as an example with the police department you know, what you're talking about is you're talking about, you know, what are the needs of the community? You know, what, what is occurring? What's potentially going to occur? What does it take to provide the level of service that we believe is necessary and reasonable for the city of Urgence? That's going to dictate coverage. Coverage is going to dictate dollars. And you could look at every other department the same way and do the same thing. But I think that what, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lynn, but I think Lynn's point is that it's dynamic. And what we don't want to do is end up tying our hands. And I mean, it could change any time. I mean, we might not even be here next year. Who knows? But, um, but I think that, you know, certainly having broad targets in terms of percentages makes sense, but understanding that it's a dynamic process and that there's parameters there that we need to operate within. Um, you know, we need to have the ability to be flexible to respond to opportunities as they present themselves. An example, you know, would be the boating infrastructure grant, the sidewalk that's going to be on the other side of Main Street to get down to the stairs, things like that. If, if we're in a very, very rigid situation, we don't have the ability to be as nimble as we could be. But we do need to start, and, and that's, a, that's a change from the way that things have been done for a very long time. We need to start now. So what's the first step? Uh, well, I think the first step is to, uh, it sounds like we are all in agreement that we want to tackle this month by month and I would recommend um, and perhaps ask for a friendly amendment to your mo motion that we address the departments alphabetically. And uh, we begin at the second meeting in September. 
raise two things. I think that 5A could have been reworded just to say Virgen's department's long-term budget. I don't think we need to focus right. police. Um, and while I don't think we want to set, you know, this department gets this percent, this department gets that percent, I do think it would be prudent to have a cap for any department that, you know, no department, office, agency within the city should contain more than X percent of the total budget, which could be put into the new charter that we're formulating right now, just to say without, a, without voter approval, the operating budget of administration or public works or recreation or you know, it would just be any agency doesn't exceed whatever percentage we come up with, 35 percent, 45 percent, 40 percent. Um, we can keep it kind of where it is now, but if we don't have a cap that we stop at, then creep is very easy. Just a, it's just two more percent this year, and just a percent this year, and just, and so it just keeps going. And we do have, at some point, <laughs> hopefully in the next month or so, we will present the yeah. charter, and that would be an easy line to add into the subsection that's just about budget, which doesn't exist in the current charter. I, I, I think that that might make sense, and I take it even a step further, um, that a increase in the budget overall in excess of whatever percent would require a referendum vote. It'd be like California. I just want to make clear how that we separate out <coughs> operating budget from total budget because if we have voter approved bonding, I don't want a thirty million dollar sewer rebuild to say, well sorry, we've blown absolutely <laughs> that's that's reasonable. Yep. Yeah, I think you have to be careful how you word it yep. and um, well, you, and also, you know, even if you go up a couple of percent, remember that 40 percent of a larger budget is a different, is a larger number. Larger number. So there's, you I, know, you got to think about that too. Uh, I, I understand that. Yeah. And I, I don't think our, our community needs to govern by referendum. I just, I just think it's kind of a, it's a. That's for elected. Well, I, that's what I think. Yeah, I think, and I think a lot of people just vote no because it's so easy to do it in the ballot box. They don't understand right. what's behind all of the budget work that we've right. done and how we've tried to rationalize it, you know, and try and make it palatable within reason. So I would, I would just remind the council that when we began our budget discussion, I said whatever decision we make, I think this is a direct co quote, will require courage. So that means when we have these discussions, we all need to be willing to stand by our convictions. Any more discussion on the motion? I would just ask, uh, just make one comment, um, Jeff, that the concern, I have a concern, Mark, regarding a cap, percentage cap. And, you know, just as an example, if we said a department may not go above 38% and we know we're looking at a 12% health care increase, in the coming year, that mean, that's going to force cuts, right? So, is that your is that the road that you would go down regarding the potential charter language? It would probably then force us to reevaluate insurance. So maybe we don't want to cut within that department, but we want to lessen what we're insuring or go find another insurer. It would. It would require us to figure out something instead of just saying, well, we'll just keep going and let's let's increase this. But yeah, potentially it could impact that. I think that that discussion about the charter should come when the charter's presented. Yeah, I, just, I was reading through it. Yeah, this. but I just, you know, the charter has done very well for the 100 years it's been there. So, you know, to, for us to start saying this is wrong. Not wrong, it just exists. No, I know. It's, right. it's just that this, I think it's the wrong discussion for this item. <clears throat> All right. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll start second meeting in September. Sure. Great. Item B, council adoption of the 2020 municipal budget. Do you have any comments you'd like to make there? Um, I think everyone here was included in former manager Holly's email of uh, two weeks ago now, a week, ten, uh, I've lost track, 10 days. Um, and his guidance, to paraphrase to the council, is that in addition to 
adopting the tax rate, you should also take action to adopt, adopt the municipal budget as well. That's his opinion. I'll tell them the budget as presented at our annual meeting. Motion made. Second. And it is seconded. Any discussion? I disagree with former manager Mayor. No Holly's interpretation, but I don't see a problem with making this motion. So noted. And I agree with you, for the record. All right, if there's no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, methadone clinic discussion. So the uh, zoning office and DRB have received an application for a um, clinic to go in on Main Street. Um, it is opioid and uh, alcohol addiction treatment services. And this is on the agenda at the uh, request of Alderman Austin today. Um, Savita Health is a healthcare practice with licensed and trained physicians, nurse practitioners, counselors, social workers, and support staff. Uh, they specialize in providing medical medication assisted treatment, which is MAT, uh, including counseling and recovery support services for those struggling with opioid and or alcohol use disorder. Um, we have nothing um, in our ordinances nor our charter that would preclude this uh, business from coming uh, into the community. Uh, but I think Alderman Austin was at a meeting. In planning if an application meets the requirements, a permit is granted. Um, and it's unfortunate that we are not in a position to get out in front of this. Um, but, and, and it's timely because we're discussing or will be discussing budgeting issues. Um, and, and I'm not familiar with the entity. I'm not, I'm, and I don't even, do we know where on Main Street? Yes, it is uh, 210, 214 Street. Okay. So, um, it, it's unfortunate that we're not in a position to get out in front of this because this is clearly a situation where um, it's an entity and a use that is coming into the city of Urgens that is going to have some impact. Um, it's going to have some impact in terms of likely the police department. Um, I don't know if Chief has any thoughts or any experience with this sort of thing. Um, but there's some impacts there. Um, I don't know the structure of the entity. I don't know how they will own the property. I don't know what the tax implications are, but it strikes me as a net negative. Net negatives are something to avoid. Um, and so I, I don't know what options we have. I don't know where this leaves us, but we need to be more proactive in terms of this type of thing, because this is not going to benefit the city of Urgens. When you say net negative, you're speaking strictly financially. You're not speaking to the impact that it would have on people who are suffering from opioid use disorder, alcohol use I'm, disorder? I'm, I'm sure it's going to benefit them, but it's going to be of net economic loss to the city of Urgens. It's not going to, I mean, it, um, it will likely impact property values it will have an impact in terms of services, and those two impacts are likely to significantly outweigh any economic benefit as far as tax revenue, employment, or anything else. I understand, and um, you know, opioids are a huge problem, alcohol and other substances, um, but to have a facility like that on Main Street, the way that we're trying to position Virgins, does not make any sense to me. I'm not sure how they can get a zoning permit. That's there's, supposed to be central business. There's some question, um, Lynn, as to whether or not the permit will be granted. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't meet our <coughs> plan. There, there's been some dialogue between the applicant, the owner, the landlord, and our zoning administrator, Peter Guerin, uh, as to whether or not it is an applicable use in the downtown business district. We, <coughs> meaning Peter and I, don't have an answer to that question at this time. So I had discussions with the same company, with our front space. They have about 150 employees. Um, they're located in the Northeast. I think they have probably six other um, types of, of units throughout the state of Vermont. They're trying to grow in Vermont. Um, 
I think that you, we could certainly reach out to other towns who have one of these uh, in their town and just see if, have, if there's been a positive or negative effect. Um, I, I think saying property values are going to go down is something that you need to prove. You can't say that's going to happen. Um, you know, when I talked to them, we talked about this, and I, you know, being on Main Street versus maybe being in another location may make a difference. Um, you know, sh one of Savita's, you know, representatives that I talked to said, you know, they're going to be bringing in, you know, 10 or 15 people a day, conceivably, you know, to have these. They, they don't dispense any drugs. I know that. It really is more counseling uh, and referrals. But they'll be coming in here. And these are not, you know, homeless people. Some of these people are very well-to-do people. They just have a real problem. Um, and, sh and she actually said, you know, we, we would be bringing these people and their families to, to Virgen's when she actually thought it could be a net positive. Now, I have no idea. I'm not going to make a judgment either way. But I, I think that maybe some investigation might be in order if, if it's in question. I, I, I would agree. I, I, what I had heard. And, and I have not spoken with these folks. What I had heard was that they were planning on dispensing either methadone or suboxone. That's what so. I had heard. And I, I don't know. No, I heard it was definitely not methadone. Okay. And, and, it, and, and that's possibly a different situation. I mean, as far as methadone and suboxone, I mean, even within the treatment community, there are some significant questions as to it's whether or not it makes sense to take someone who's addicted to opioids and and addict them to another substance. I, it just you know, so there's a lot of other issues there. Um, I, I don't think we have enough information to make any kind of decision, but I think we could certainly look into it further. What what the DRB does, or you know, I'm not sure if the council has any any bearing on this anyway. I, I don't believe that we do. No. I think it's as I said, uh, Alderman Austin. And as I think he mentioned in his comments, he would like to see us review, I assume, an ordinance or some sort of policy in the future I, that may, and I'm paraphrasing, David, but correct, um, you know, that may stop this from happening again in the future. I'll just make a comment that we worked very hard on the central business district from the downtown vitalization, <laughs> from zoning. It's very clear that it's supposed to be retail, central business not offices on the first floors and not residential on the first floor. So putting aside anything about the methadone clinic, it doesn't meet the intent of this downtown district. And I would think that that alone should be a stance that the, the city council supports or we're going to lose. We have very little space on Main Street. We only have one side. And to take another storefront away would be catastrophic to the future of downtown the way Regenz is growing. We need more retail in town. And, and we, and I was not on the council at the time, but I attended a couple of meetings. Council went down this road before with that same building relative to another unit in it. And, um, you know, my position, I, I've been a landlord, I own commercial property. Um, it's not incumbent on the city of Urgens to make decisions relative to what's best for an individual property owner. If I think I'm going to have problems leasing space in a building, you know what, I don't buy it. Um, so, we, and you're correct. I mean, I, I think that we need to be a lot more proactive and we need to have, Mary used the word courage. We need to have courage when we're addressing these things because we didn't at one point. Um, you know, I I'm spend a lot of time looking at other downtowns and other parts of the Northeast, and this is very unusual. Um, we only have commercial activity essentially on one side of the street. That that's that's a major major challenge, and the reason is is years ago decisions were made that created this situation that we're dealing with now. And no matter how nice we make things, no matter how hard we try, that is a situation that's not likely to get any better, but we can keep it from getting any worse. And that's what we need to do. And I think that 
it's entirely reasonable for us as a council to take a position relative to these types of things, and, and there's others that are coming as well, um, and do what's best for the community. Do what's best for the city of Virginia. Put Virgins first and look at things through the lens of, is this of benefit to this city? And, and there are things that may be of benefit on a larger societal level that have a negative impact on us. And that's unfortunate, but we have to do what's best for the city of Virgins. To your point, Lynn, we are looking at it very binary. Either it fits or it does not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of information that we don't have at this point, and um, I, I agree that it's that it, the DRB will take care of this issue. I think, I think it's sort of out of our hands. And if they don't, then, then it comes back to us. Yeah. I do want to make sure we don't fall down kind of a NIMBY path either, where we're like, well, we really understand that there's an opioid crisis and there's really a problem, and we're really hoping somebody else deals with it. So well, I think it's important to remember that this, this does sort of reinforce Virgins as the downtown for the five town area. And you're right, opi opioids are a real problem. And because of that, I think it makes sense for such a center to perhaps be located in Virgins. It doesn't have to be our center of business. It doesn't have to be downtown. Yeah. We just need to tread lightly. <laughs> we, we, we already. <clears throat> um, you know, Chief is here. I'm going to ask him to speak about the one that the Valley Vista. Can you talk about that a little bit in terms of the impacts that that has on your department? Sure. Um, Valley Vista, two years ago, was it? Two years, I believe. Down all in place. And, uh, you know, Valley Vista, like any type of rehab center or treatment center, you're, you're <coughs> go, you know going into it, you're going to have challenges. Uh, people aren't going there because everything is right in their life. They've got some issues that have to be taken care of. So. Sometimes when people go to Valley Vista for treatment, they go in there with uh, some challenges. And sometimes those challenges present themselves at the front door, sometimes when the people are inside the place, and we have to respond. Um, and response to a person who's having a emotional mental health crisis or substance abuse crisis is not the kind of response that you send one officer on. Uh, it doesn't work well, and it, consequently, if you do, uh, you might find yourself in a position that it kind of it, it makes the situation worse wherever it is too. Um, we have had a, a number of issues down there. Valley Vista hasn't presented as much of a problem, but we have had issues down there where, um, and I've talked to Matt about that, where uh, somebody from Chittenden County may be uh, sent there as a resident. They've got some issues with uh, legal proceedings. And now we're being called upon to take that person. If they leave on their own accord, we're, we're being asked to transport them back to a different county, which, again, plays, uh, has a large impact on my staff. Um, if you transport somebody under, and I want to say normal circumstances, if, God bless you, if there is such a thing, um, you, you want to have two officers transporting somebody. If somebody is experiencing a mental health crisis or a substance abuse crisis, uh, <clears throat> it's it's ludicrous not to send two officers. If you take two officers off my shift, I've got no officers to respond. So the point I'm making is uh, when, when you have a facility like this, you've got to go in the understanding that it's going to present challenges. And you have to make sure that people that are responding to those challenges can adequately handle it for the person who's experienced them, the people that are working with them, and you want to make sure that people are safe, to include the police officers. And I can tell you, dealing with somebody who's having a, an issue like that is a handful. And it takes a lot of experience, a lot of patience, and uh, a lot, sometimes, good luck. But there is going to be a difference between a residential treatment center and a there, there is, and, you know, business type counseling. To that point, you know, if, if it's a counseling service, uh, that, does, that does answer some different issues. That doesn't pose a different scenario. Whereas you're not dispensing any type of medication. Nobody's there for short term or long term treatment. So, again, <clears throat> but it, again, yep. even though with that, you still may have a situation where you have an emotional, somebody under emotional distress, and uh, we may have to respond. So, we do have another, uh, other counselors and psychologists who are, have offices in this city, and the people going there may also be 
experiencing problems. So true, but you know, I, I, I will, I, and there's not one that's more than the other, but substance abuse yep. presents a, a other much triggers. More yep. I think you know, if again, lots of information needed, but if we're addressing substance abuse issues up front and we're helping more people, then ideally that saves time and resources on your end as well. Of course, there's lots of questions about whether this should be in a central business district, but I think we want to make sure. I, I totally agree with Mark's point of like, we are we are the city here. Well, and that's yeah. a service that often is, is people go to a central location to, to have that service, so. Getting back to the location issue, the location is up to you folks. The response to it is, is, is my challenge. And, uh, and the, uh, the other part of that is, you know, it's, it's here. It's here throughout Vermont. Yeah. And if there's resources that somebody has access to, they may not have access to in Bristol or Middlebury. But again, you have to go into it with the knowledge of what you're going into that. And that's my, that's my advice. And, and I, I want to be clear for the record, I have significantly less concern um, with a counseling facility. My concern is predicated on what I had heard. I talked with City Manager Chabot, um, and if it's in fact a counseling center or a proposed counseling center, that's probably not that different um, from a lot of other places, and that's significantly less impact. Um, but if, if getting into dispensing Suboxone or Methadone that's an entirely different animal, and, and there are negative, significant negative impacts to that, and it does not belong on our main street here in Rujens. Well, let's see how this plays out. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Chief, thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anything else on that issue? Moving along to the local emergency management plan adoption. Yeah, this is simply, we did this actually last uh, October. Um, this is the city is required to adopt the uh, local emergency management plan, um, indicating that I have complied with our, my NIMS training, which uh, which I have done. Uh, there are no changes uh, to last year's um, municipal plan, and it just requires a, an adoption on behalf of a member of the council. Um, that's me. That's an authorized representative. Are you the coordinator? I am. So it just requires my signature. Yes. Yep. Great. Um, just a reminder, while Jeff's signing that, we are going to be taking place, taking part in a Category 4 exercise uh, in uh, October. The state of Vermont is trying to apply its learnings from post-Irene, where there was just not a central um, wealth of information, no contact points. Uh, so this is really ramping up statewide uh, so that we're not left in that position three days into an event and not really realizing who's in charge and who should be doing what. So great. There's a great group in Addison County that's really um, spearheading this, so it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Item E, VLCT annual meeting delegate. Yes, so in, uh, I'm sorry, um, Wednesday, October 2nd, VLCT uh, will be holding its annual board of directors meeting and the city of Regens uh, should um, recommend a delegate. Um, we've suggested Jeff Fritz be our uh, delegate to the 2019 annual business meeting um, or anybody else who's interested in attending. Is anyone else interested in attending? I make a motion. Jeffrey Fritz be second. designated. <laughs> Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? I may go to the meeting, but you're okay. welcome to be Great. Okay. We and can carpool. Perhaps Alderman Donnelly. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, if there's no discussion, all those in favor? Please say aye. 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 Just sign as deputy mayor rather than having me sign it myself. Yeah. It's a small print, but somebody else signed it. White. Right. <laughs> All right, item F is the recreation report. Well, the recreation committee is meeting on a very regular basis, and I have some fabulous news. Um, we are now going to have a real skating rink. 
the school had a little fund, not a little fund, it was $6,000, um, and there's going to be um, rip-proof, skate-proof, um, fiberglass type of, not fiberglass, it's, uh, Easy. yes, um, base to the, go, it's going to go right over the, the uneven yep. uh, pavement down there. And we bought a Bambini, which is a little Zambini. <laughs> um, and that's going to be pulled, we hope, by the town garden tractor that plows the sidewalk plow. Yep. So we're very, very excited that's going to happen. Um, and the Recreation Committee is going to take care of flooding it, keeping it, and running the Bambini. Um, and we are trying to start uh, a fundraising event for $135,000 to put a permanent structure over the skating rink. So if anyone has any great ideas how we could do that, we'd like to be able to put the structure up in, in about two years, have it done in two years. So um, it will be It'll be covered in the summer, so you're not out in the blazing sun, and it'll be snow protected in the winter. So if anyone knows of any very, very, very generous person that would like to donate $135,000, we'd be happy to name the uh, pavilion in their name. Um, and this will benefit all of the children in the five districts, not just for gents. So we're very excited about that progress. That's great. And by the way, the regrading was a thirty-five, forty thousand dollar project that we will now not need to do. So that's a great job on behalf of the rec committee. So what happens to the basketball backcourts? There Some of the posts have to come out, but four remain. Is that, that is correct? correct. Yep. There's one that's so kind of in the middle. middle. Of, there's one in the middle that just seems like a hazard to begin with. And when um, Tim Cook brought this to my attention, I thought that it'd be nothing for that to go I, I, away. Yeah. Figured somebody figured it out. Yeah. So it's really going to be a real benefit yeah, if awesome. we can get the pavilion, and then it might be be rented out to help pay for it. Or there's all kinds of things that could happen with that. So, if anybody has any fabulous ideas, I'd love to hear from you um, about that because it's really exciting, and it'll again bring more activity down to the rec field, and uh, hopefully more adults. That's that's great news. That's awesome. Yeah. Anything else for us? That's it right now. Well, that's a good report. Thank you. Thank you. City manager's report. Thank you. Uh, Virginia's Police Department unionization vote results. The um, Virginia's Police Department voted unanimously to unionize at the end of last week. Um, there's a 10-day certification process that the Vermont Labor Board will allow to run out in case anybody has any changes of heart. Uh, we don't anticipate that happening. And uh, after that certification process uh, timetable runs out, we will be working with the Vermont Labor Board and our Virgins Police Department on uh, negotiating a contract. When would that go to effect? I do not have any details as of yet. Any other questions on that topic? Great. Boating infrastructure grant, the big grant sank. Um, unfortunately, uh, Rennie Perry from the Virgins Partnership uh, had volunteered to assist us in the grant writing. In working with um, Montpelier, um, we found out immediately that our basin is not deep enough. There is a minimum requirement to be eligible for the grant, and that is a, a six-foot low tide um, water level. And we are in some places three and a half to four and a half feet. Um, so the big grant sank, uh, but it, it did present a, a different opportunity uh, that the partnership is going to assist us in a grant uh, grant writing on, which is a pump-out station. So. At, at present, we do not offer the opportunity for our visiting boaters to be able to pump out um, their uh, sanitary waste. Um, and 
the state is very actively pushing these grants because the inference is if they're not pumping out in a station, they're pumping out uh, en route up river or down river or out in the lake. So um, Rennie felt very optimistic about uh, going after that grant and putting the pump out station on the Falls Park side of the river. It's adjacent to our wastewater treatment plant. It makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, as, as that starts to develop, I'll certainly be bringing more information back to the council, but I just wanted to inform you folks that the big grant is not going to be moving forward. Um, I did have a meeting with Matt Daniels yesterday, uh, and Matt's got some great ideas as to how we can improve our current docks, which I think is kind of what we were going to go after uh, with, with some money. So uh, Jim Lero and I will be working um, in the early spring with Matt to in, continue to improve the asset um, down there. And then um, I'll just make a quick PSA if I can. Um, Matt Daniels was um, omitted from the volunteer list for our Virgin's Day um, chicken um, barbecue. It was merely an oversight, clerical oversight. Again, I've spoken personally with Matt to convey my office's apology. Um, Matt's okay, um, but I just wanted it out in uh, the public that there, you know, Matt does a great deal for the community. Um, you know, the McDonough Park really is a reflection. It's, it's kind of like his extended lawn down there, and he treats it. He treats it as such. And it was unfortunate that um, that we had this omission, but it will, you know. It's because of the cold air. We'll, in, we'll ensure that that does not happen again in the future. Great, thank you. Uh, yep. Question about the um, pump out. Yes. Would there be an opportunity to charge for that service? No. Uh, that's what I do know about the the that grant. Is it, is it a self-operated pump? -out? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if there'd be like a. Coin yeah. pay charges. I mean, everybody charges. Coin. For that. Yeah. Coin, coin up. Yeah, the grant, uh, the grant is to incentivize the boaters to use the pump out. Uh -huh. And so as such, free. there's an inference that if you charge them, they will not pay. Who so, are these people that were? <laughs> yeah. I did not say that. Many people now are, are anchoring, like at Kingsland Bay and Porter Bay, bringing their dinghies up. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if they bring the boat up, they're probably more apt to spend more time and maybe spend more money. So it may be a good thing to get the boats up here as mm -hmm. long as we, they, we have enough dockage for them. Yep, yeah. agreed. Yep. Is there any possibility with all this to put in a shower house and uh, maybe some public toilets? So I think I said at the last meeting or maybe the one previously, that I think, I think we need to really review. We have the Basin Task Force. You know, we have a recreation committee. And I'd like to figure out how we can continue to improve the asset. I think that there's low-hanging fruit, such as a uh, screened porta potty um, for a season that's a, not a huge financial lift for us. Um, I, I would like to see us get to a point where, yes, we are, we are increasing the amenities, be it you know, permanent toilet installation, a permanent shower installation. Um, I think that, you know, just based, I guess I've been looking at the basin a little differently this year from my chair, and I've been amazed at how much you know, traffic there has been down there. Um, and I've had some conversation with some entities here in the community about, you know, do we monetize that opportunity? Um, I spoke with numerous boaters that said a buck a foot would be nothing. Um, you know, right now we're on a volunteer basis. And I think, as I said at the last meeting, you know, our revenue is actually only slightly behind last year, even though the docks didn't get in until very late. So I think we as a, or the council, I will encourage the council to continue to review opportunities as they come up. Um, but, you know, Matt Daniels again said, you know, what would it be to have a, you know, porta potty with an outhouse facade built around it? You know, so you're not looking at a green, you know, porta potty. Um, and they do the maintenance, you know, they, uh, they maintain the unit. And again, that could be a good way to get started on improving that experience. Just a quick question. For the, um, as it's a, Volunteer pay? Do they come up and pay here at City Hall? Where do no, they there's pay? A drop box. There's a drop box. Okay. Yeah, yep. down at McDonough Drive. Got it. Great. Yep. Thanks. We've talked about the Basin Committee, but change the verbiage 
there to try and make people think that it's more of an obligation than it is a gift. True. <laughs> Whether it's a buck a foot or whatever, and if and if there if people if there maybe if the rec um, department has a director, maybe there's you know a student employee that might just go down there and just you know pretend he's the dock master kind of thing. Yeah. Might just, might just increase the, the revenue. Part of the box is yeah. Yeah. Right. But sure. they come right over to us. And Yes. With all the RVs that are coming through Virgins, why not make that available, very available, for a pump-out station for RVs, the Class A's to Class B's, not B necessarily, but C's, and a, why not make it available uh, under the Plant 3 underpass, be a pain in the shorts, but on Patton Road, it's a direct route, north-south, over to Basin Harbor, there are tons of big Class A's and Class C's coming through there. Why not give them an opportunity before they get north or south or decide what direction they want to go? Let them pump out their tanks, let them add some potable water, and be on their way. But charge them for it. They expect that. I'll absolutely take that under advisement. It's just a thought. Let me look into that. I'd just a thought. To. There's sure. RVs everywhere, and those things don't typically stop when the boat stop. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, their yeah. season is much season, longer. Sure. Consider it. Okay. Think well, we'll do so. Thank you. River's Edge, I would pump out. Yes. River's Edge? Yeah. yeah. So, um, they do. Um, uh, Anna, Charlotte Boys just bought. Whispering the, Pines? Whispering Pines. Oh, okay. They have a pump out, $10. Is that for RVs and boats? Mm -hmm. No, RVs. RVs. Yeah. So we could cover the marine aspect of it in the basin, but that's a long trip from the lake. Yeah. It's a long haul. If you're going to be up here anyway, you might as well take advantage of it, refresh your portables, and then be on your way with empty tanks, full and empty as, as it applies. But uh, I didn't realize, it seems logical that Whispering Pines would have RV pump outs because that's what they deal with. Mm -hmm. But do they accommodate, are they friendly to transients? Yes. Anna will be. I, Anna, I'm I know transit, and that's where we go. Okay. Okay. So it's well known that they have pump outs for transients. Okay. Got that covered then. Great. Any other questions for Matt? Uh, just, I did re include the budget um, period to date budget packet. Any questions? Okay. I, was, I was surprised at the amount of revenue that planning and zoning has received already. Peter's been extremely busy. I keep, I, yeah, I keep getting a note from him saying, you owe me more money <laughs> for an application of some sort. Yep. It's like. Okay. Chief, yes. Mayor, if I may, I just wanted to let the city council know that this year the Virginia Police Department participated in the Vermont Department of Agriculture uh, creaming with a cop, a cop, and uh, they provided 10 brochures to us. We handed out, I mean, yeah, 100 brochures, and the officers walked around the city, went out doing the foot patrols and handed them out to the kids. Uh, benefactors were Cookie Love, our own scoop shop here in town, and goodies. And hopefully I can get 100 in addition next year. The other thing is, uh, so it goes well with the kids, the kids love that. Uh, the other thing is Officer Greenson will be attending the second level of his commercial motor vehicle enforcement training which will enable him to do inspections on vehicles and make sure the vehicles are safe. Um, and the tuition for that is, is free of charge. So all we have to do is pay for his room and board. Great. Thank you. All right. The mayor has nothing to report this evening. So I am looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any opposition? Otherwise, everyone, please say aye. Aye. Great. Thank you.